Hi everybody and welcome to Simply Scuba. In this episode we're going to take a deep dive into snorkels. So your snorkel is one of your diving tools that most divers start out with but it kind of gets left in their kit bag more and more because, well, you have your regulators to breathe from and a snorkel has a pretty limited depth rating compared to a regulator. So why bother with a snorkel? Well, your snorkel is a very useful piece of kit in certain situations, and they're not as simple as many people think. There is a lot that goes into designing and making a snorkel. So let's take a closer look at snorkels. So starting at the very top, there are a few traditional styles of snorkel. The most basic is just an open top. These are the cheapest because the snorkel tube will just finish uh, and just have an, an open tube, nothing fancy at all. Um, these, as I said, are the cheapest, but they're also useful for water rescue breaths. You've heard of mouth to mouth. Well, in the water, mouth to mouth is pretty tiring, but mouth to snorkel is actually quite practical. But these snorkel tops obviously don't protect you from any kind of water ingress in any way. So at the smallest wave going over the top and the water is going to end up in that snorkel. An upgraded snorkel will have something that's usually called a wave deflector. So these snorkels have a fancier top that has a concealed opening so that if a small wave splashes over the opening, most of the water will just be deflected away from that opening, keeping water out. So these are good, but obviously they're not 100% effective. So they are good for people who don't mind a little bit of water in their snorkel, um, but they just don't want tons of water getting in. However, both of these designs uh, can't stop water getting in when you dive under the water, obviously. Um, for that, we have dry top snorkels. So dry top snorkels have a small float that is attached to a hinge mechanism on the inside, and that will basically block the top of the snorkel when the snorkel is submerged. So these are great to keep water out of them when they are submerged, and they have a pretty comprehensive deflector around them anyway, so they do keep a lot of water out. So these are the most expensive because they have moving parts and stuff in. Um, they have the most kind of technology that goes into them. Um, but uh, going from a traditional snorkel to one of these can feel a little bit weird. Um, they are great at keeping water out, but swimming on the surface and a small wave can kind of activate that float, which blocks the top. So if you're inhaling when it actually blocks, you then create a seal so you need to be prepared to exhale a little bit to release that float so that you can breathe again. It's not an awful sensation but it's a little bit weird uh, the first time that you get used to it and one question that we uh, we often get asked is if you dive under the water how long can you breathe from the air in the snorkel and the answer is no time at all. Um, that's not what it's there for, it's not to trap a small amount of air in that snorkel um, so that you can breathe from it, it's just to stop the water from getting in. So your comfort with water around your mouth and airway really determines which snorkel top you should go for. If you're pretty confident, then I'd be very happy going for just an open top or maybe even a deflector. Uh, if you are not keen on water in any ways, um, then a deflector. And yeah, if you really can't stand water, then definitely a dry top is the way to go. Snorkel tops will often have a bright orange top or at least a bright color, but uh, recent regulations have kind of changed. So um, some snorkels may just have a clear or a black top snorkel, uh, just something that matches the theme of the snorkel when they're not uh, required to have uh, really sort of bright colors at the top. The orange top itself, that ranges from just an orange sticker that just wraps around the top of the uh, the snorkel to uh, literal orange plastic sections that make like the wave deflector. Um, but they're there to help make you stand out a little bit better in the water. A little uh, sort of flash of orange might just be all it sort of needs for someone on the beach to see where you are or a boat to see you. Um, so that's what they're there for. 
Moving down around the snorkel, uh, about the middle of the, uh, the snorkel, you will find a clip that is there to attach the snorkel onto your mask strap. So some divers choose to remove these completely by simply tucking the snorkel underneath their mask strap. Uh, this is fine, but it's not always the most comfortable because your, your mask strap is just gonna be pushing that snorkel into your head. But a basic snorkel clip will just have a, uh, a rigid clip with kind of a hook section that just slips over your mask strap. These are just fine, they do the job, um, but you'll need to kind of hook it on and then take it off um, if you want to store your mask in its box. And they can be a little bit fiddly at times. These clips uh, usually slip up and down the body of the snorkel um, just to sort of move the mouthpiece of the snorkel into position, um, but that's about it as far as movement. Some clips will have a hinge system, so the hook um, will actually kind of turn a little so that your snorkel can angle how it is, um, so it's nice and comfortable and exactly how you like it. But it's also handy for divers that uh, when the snorkel is out of your mouth, the bottom swings away from your jaw um, so it stays out of the way. We usually have our regulators coming over our right hand shoulder so you want the snorkel to kind of dip out of the way. Other clips may have a ratchet system that allows the snorkel clip to kind of move up and down the length of the snorkel better than just a smooth bore um, that just kind of moves by itself. And finally, some snorkel clips are actually two-parters, um, so the hook stays on your mask strap. That's always fixed, so that can never slip off. And then the other half stays on your snorkel, so you can separate the two uh, without any fiddly clips. But when you want to use a snorkel, you just push it on. And in an emergency, you can get a figure of eight, so just a really simple um, kind of rubbery silicone strap uh, that effectively just goes over the body of your snorkel and, uh, and loops over. These are very, very fiddly because um, you have to kind of slide them over the entire body of the snorkel every time you use them, uh, but they're great in an emergency. Just below the snorkel clip, the lower third of most snorkels will have a bend uh, so that the snorkel makes it into your mouth. So a fixed bend snorkel is the most basic, obviously. Uh, and as the name suggests, it has just a fixed bend that just hooks around your jaw and holds the mouthpiece in front of your mouth. If you're only using the snorkel, then it's not much of a problem. Uh, but on a dive, it can just get in the way just by sitting there in front of your face. For a more flexible fit, some snorkels have a semi-flexible bend with a corrugated section of hose um, that has a little bit of bend in it um, that makes the, uh, the mouthpiece a bit more comfortable, uh, but they're still a little rigid, so they'll always try and kind of twist into its natural shape. And that's why we get fully flexible bends. So fully flexible is uh, similar, but they're made from a much more flexible like silicone material. Your mouthpiece sits kind of straight down on the snorkel out of the way when you're not using it but when you are using your snorkel it bends naturally so the mouthpiece sits right in front of your mouth uh, but doesn't try and pull away. The mouthpiece itself isn't usually that dissimilar to a regulator's mouthpiece for scuba diving, but you'll notice that the mouthpiece is usually angled in one direction, and that's because snorkels are designed to go on your left hand side, so that they're always out of the way of your regulator. So if you're trying your snorkel on and the mouthpiece just is at a really odd angle, it's because your snorkel should be on your left hand side, not your right. Most mouthpieces are replaceable. Uh, they simply push on and uh, you can just sort of tease them off. They're fairly easy. Um, there isn't a universal general size though. You can't just uh, sort of buy any old mouthpiece and guarantee that yes, it will fit, but it is usually fairly easy to find one that will fit. And most mouthpieces, uh, even if the actual sort of snorkel hole is a little bit too big, they, they will stretch. So they're, they're pretty pretty good for that. The best thing, uh, if you have a actual specifically molded mouthpiece, is just to find a complete replacement. Um, they will be available somewhere, they're just harder to find, uh, but because they are molded, they usually have a very unique fitting that actually holds that mouthpiece into position. But for most snorkels, uh, it is just a pretty standard mouthpiece. 
the bottom of the snorkel where your mouthpiece is is usually quite large on some snorkels. On a basic snorkel, it will just be a final bend to go into your mouth, but if water gets into your snorkel, this is where it's gonna collect. That's the lowest point. If a small amount of water makes it in, it's no big deal because you can always breathe past it. Um, but if too much gets in, it just blocks that airway and you do need to clear it and get rid of that water. This is why a lot of snorkels, uh, sort of this area down at the bottom, can be very large and we call it a water trap. So water collects down there, down in the water trap, and it takes a lot longer to actually fill up with water so you can still breathe past it even though there's quite a lot of water in your snorkel, um, you probably won't even notice it. However, instead of needing to uh, sort of clear the entire snorkel um, by sort of blowing all that water all the way up and out, most snorkels today will actually have a small one-way valve in the bottom right underneath that water trap. These water valves means that every time you exhale, even gently, you actually push a little bit of water out of the bottom of the snorkel through that valve, clearing the snorkel literally every time you breathe. These valves are great and they make clearing your snorkel much easier, but it is important to keep the valve clean and out of the sand. Some snorkelers find their snorkel just naturally start to fill with water, but they don't realize that the valve at the bottom is just full of sand because they've thrown it down on the beach and that just lets water in. So just flush out your snorkel every now and then, just with some warm soapy water and that will prevent this. The only downside to having these one-way valves, other than keeping it out of the sand, is that if you're trying to use it for in-water rescue breaths, it just won't work because your breath will naturally just go straight out of that bottom valve. The overall shape of snorkels varies quite greatly, but most have a fairly straight shape. Uh, the straighter the shape, the smoother the airflow and less breathing resistance, but it does mean that the snorkel sits a little bit further from your head, so swimming through the water, it does add a little bit of drag. Now, not enough to turn your head or slow you down, but it can make the snorkel kind of wiggle in strong current, which can be a little annoying. Wraparound snorkels, um, do just as the name suggests, they wrap around your head so they're a bit more streamlined. You don't tend to see too many of these for scuba diving uh, and snorkeling neither, uh, but you do see some for free diving uh, because they're using their snorkel all the time and it's just better to have that opening a little bit further behind them for streamlining. <laughs> If you literally chopped your snorkel in half and look at the cross section, it will either be a pretty round circle or kind of a flat ellipse. So the flat cross section is a little bit more hydrodynamic, so it creates less drag. Uh, it kind of cuts through the water a bit better, but if the internal area is the same as a round bore, then there shouldn't be too much difference between the two. None that I've noticed that is. Um, as long as that internal um, sort of structure is smooth bore and, uh, and a decent size, then yeah, you should get plenty of air. Most snorkels are rigid, so they have no bend in them at all. So this is good because it always keeps the airway open, but it makes the snorkel a little bit vulnerable to damage during transport and storage. If something doesn't bend or twist when it comes under force, it breaks. Uh, now, this isn't a common occurrence, but you do need to bear it in mind when you're packing your snorkel just to be a little bit more careful if you have a completely rigid snorkel. Because of this, you can also find flexible snorkels, and they come in a range of flexibleness um, from semi rigid to almost completely flexible. So, semi rigid snorkels hold the airway open, but they will bend if they need to, but after that, they'll just pop back to their original state. Completely flexible snorkels, on the other hand, are they're very handy um, and they're often advertised as like pocket snorkels because you can literally roll them up into a ball. Um, they're, they're good because you can pack them down really, really small um, and into some sort of small pockets and places, only they really do bend and flex in the water and if something bends all the way, it is just going to close your airway and if you're not careful, Mm, they're not great. So they're not as good as a primary snorkel, but they are fairly useful in an emergency. 
Now, snorkels haven't changed that much in the past 50 something years, but a recent change has blown up in popularity and is ironically a return to a previous design. So full face snorkels are all over the place now and they do seem appealing because they isolate your face to keep the water away and their design means that they literally defog themselves so you get a very clear view of the underwater world. However, there are a lot of very scary blogs, stories and videos out there uh, and I'm going to talk about that problem a little bit later. But first, Let's take a look at full face snorkels. So at the very top will be a snorkel uh, and they're typically going to have a dry valve right at the top to keep water out uh, and they're usually fitted right at the top of the mask or either to uh, sort of one side. The mask itself comes in a range of different sizes for different face shapes and sizes and it will cover your entire face, eyes, mouth, nose and everything. Inside the mask, there will be a sort of nose and mouth section separate to the rest of the mask. This is for proper air circulation. At the back of the mask, you will have a multi-point strap so the mask sits on your face properly and it maintains a constant seal. And down at the bottom of the mask will be a one-way drainage valve around your chin, just like other snorkels. So if any water gets into the mask, it naturally just gets pushed out of the bottom. Okay, so when you breathe in through a full face snorkel, fresh air will flow in from the snorkel from the top of your mask and then it flows over your lenses and in front of your eyes and then it goes into that separate section which holds your nose and mouth. This defogs the lens every single time you breathe because you're breathing in fresh clean air. But when you exhale, you don't want that uh, sort of nice fresh air to mix with the uh, sort of the dirty gas that you're exhaling. So when you exhale, exhale, that gas usually vents through the frame of the mask around the side, back up to the snorkel, uh, or sort of out through the frame just to get rid of it. And this is where a lot of problems with full face snorkels comes in uh, that you will find online. But first, you kind of need to learn a little bit about something that we call dead air space. So when we breathe, uh, we breathe in air, uh, we use up some of that oxygen in our bodies, and then we exhale a higher concentration of carbon dioxide. So when you exhale that old dead air, that uh, you sort of breathe out, it fills up your windpipe, but you can't get it all the way out. You can't empty your lungs and your windpipe completely. There's still a bit of dead air by the time you fully exhale inside your windpipe. We call that a dead air space because the next time you breathe in, the first thing that you're gonna get is just what was in your windpipe. If you then add an extra tube, like a snorkel onto the end, you're increasing your dead air space. So you need to breathe more fully to flush out as much of that dead air as possible and replace it with fresh air. That's why we can't have snorkels that are really, really long because you'll just be breathing the same gas over and over again. When full face snorkels started to become more and more popular, incidents started to increase because snorkelers weren't using them properly um, and they weren't fitted properly and uh, there were a lot of cheaper designs um, that just made them actually quite dangerous to use. So cheap designs of full face snorkels actually increase your dead air space and increase your work of breathing so that CO2 levels start to rise inside the mask too high and a few people got hurt. Because of this, it's important that if you are planning to use a full face snorkel, that you take good deep breaths and you stop using it the moment you start to feel lightheaded or funny in any kind of way and make sure that you always buy a reputable full face snorkel. Smaller children shouldn't use them neither uh, because their lungs aren't fully developed and uh, you can't always rely on small kids to breathe properly uh, when they're all excited in, in the water. And if they feel a little bit weird, they might not think about it too much. So um, yeah, it's best if smaller children don't use them neither. A lot of things need to go right with a full face snorkel uh, to make sure that they're used per, uh, correctly. But if too many things go wrong, then they can be dangerous. If your full face mask fits you correctly and the design is very good with good airflow, um, then you shouldn't have a problem. However, they do require a bit of forethought and uh, sort of making sure that you do get a decent full face snorkel. It does seal correctly around your face and around your nose and mouth and you are breathing properly. There's a lot of things that you do need to consider. 
So who knew there could be so much to a humble snorkel? There, there's actually a lot of design and technology that goes just into snorkels and of course how to use them. So they're not as simple or basic as many people think they are. And they are a very useful tool when they're used correctly. On the surface, they're a great way to control your airway and keep water out of your mouth as long as you know how to use them. You can't just slap one onto your mask and you're just a snorkel master. You do need to learn how to use a snorkel properly. But let us know in the comments below what type of snorkel you like to use and why. Uh, do you prefer a more basic snorkel or do you prefer lots of valves and things to keep the water out? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget Get to subscribe to the Simply Scuba channel for more scuba diving and snorkeling advice by clicking that little old subscribe button. Go on, it's free, it's not gonna hurt you. No one will know. Thanks, thanks for watching. Safe diving.